Now coming to another point is the Pushkar, Pushkar Amsha or Pushkar Navamsha. So to explain to you this particular thing, this is a bit misunderstood. The Pushkar Navamsha is not a concept at all. Way back in 1970s, 80s, someone made a particular concept but to be very, very honest with you, Pushkar Navamsha is not a concept at all. Jatak Parija mentions about Pushkar with this particular shloka. Putro Vatur Divijanadiko Dhani Pirati Yogot Yogotra Vayodiko Aduna Meshadike Pushkar Bhagi Sakika Bhurta Janamadishu Shopan Pada. Jatak Parajat clearly states that when moon is in 21 degrees of Aries, 14 degrees of Taurus, 18 degrees of Gemini, 8 degrees of Cancer, 19 degrees of Leo, 9 degrees of Virgo, 24 degrees of Libra, 11 degrees of Scorpio, 23 degrees of Sagittarius, 14 degrees of Capricorn, 19 degrees of Aquarius and 9 degrees of Pisces. This is told as the planet being in the Pushkar Amsha. The word used in the Sanskrit sloka, see the knowledge of Sanskrit to understand astrology is very important. If you don't know Sanskrit in that scenario, your interpretation is going to be faulty, right? Because astrological classics are written in Sanskrit. If you cannot read Sanskrit, then you are like a handicapped person trying to do astrology because uh, then you have to rely on the translators, right? So knowledge of Sanskrit is very essential for a thing like astrology because astrology is written in Sanskrit. The same way, you know, knowledge of engineering is very important for someone to become an engineer in the same way, right? There are some basic requirements of the science which cannot be ignored at any given point of time. However, right? So the word is Pushkar Bhaga. Bhaga means division. Bhaga doesn't mean Navaksha. However, what people have done is that People have, uh, uh, you know, like for Aries, the 21 degree is told to be the Pushkar Amsha. Now, what people have done because of their Aranas understanding is they have uh, found out, they have calculated that the 21st degree of Aries will go to the 7th Navamsha, which is Libra. Right. So, People have made the concept that any planet in Libra Navamsha in the Aries Rashi will go to the Kuskar Navamsha. However, that's not a concept. Why not a concept? Because the Libra Navamsha from Libra Navamsha in Aries Rashi is from 20 degree to 23 degree 20 minutes. This is a long span and any planet going in this span, if you consider that planet as Pushkar, but then there is no speciality with Pushkar, right? So Pushkar Navamsha is quite an erroneous concept, right? Many people become very happy to see I have my planets in Pushkar Navamsha, what will happen, what not will happen. But as an astrologer, I can very definitely tell you that Pushkar Navamsha is not a concept which is supported by classics. Pushkar is a particular degree which is considered to be very beneficial and very good. But it is only that degree. A degree above that or a degree below that cannot be considered in Pushkar. Right? This is a very sane, uh, you know, this is a very sane understanding. Otherwise, see, we say sun is exalted in Aries. And if you believe that, you see 100 horoscopes with sun in Aries. You will see the results are fluctuating and not everyone is getting the result of an exalted sun. Why? Because sun, it is clearly stated that sun is exalted at 10 degrees of Aries. Right? So the complete of Aries cannot be taken as an exaltation of sun. Otherwise, you take 10 horoscopes of people with their sun in Aries and see if all of them are having the result that is told for exalted planet or the result which an exalted planet should give. Right? So such a compromise in astrology, in intellectual pursuit is not acceptable at any given point of time is what I particularly believe in, right? It's, uh, but, you know, for those whose astrology itself is compromised, I can make no comments at all. 
coming to the specific specific point when we say that in aries moon or any planet in aries is in pushkar amsha at 21 degrees what does it mean the definition of 21 degree is from 20 degree 00 seconds to 21 degree exact if any planet is at 21 degree 01 second it goes out of the 20 degree for an example if you see a planet and why this definition is needed or why this particular definition i will tell you using a normal funda now check this degree of moon this moon is 25 degree libra 56 minutes okay this moon is at 26th degree it is 25 degrees some minute he is in 26th degree why if i keep on adding now right now now you see this chart i am just slowly slowly increasing one hour now you see this moon is at 29 degree libra 39 minutes after this moon is never going to be on the 30th degree right this particular moon will never be on the 30th degree okay this from 29 degree the minutes will keep on increasing and as soon as this moon reaches 29 degree 59 minutes he will not reach 29 degree 60 minutes but will go to 0 degree of the next sign scorpio right this is the same way as in your watch of 24 hours from right you know there is the last hour is only 11 degree 59 minutes you never get to witness 11 degree 60 minutes right after 11 degree 59 minutes it is 12 00 1160 zero. never happens in the same way see right now i have adjusted moon to be 29 degree libra 59 minutes if you don't consider it the 30th minute then just increasing the time by 1 second moon will go to 0.00 scorpio moon will never come at 30.00 degree in libra it will never come at, right so for this particular reason when we say 21 degree it means 20 degree 01 minutes to 21 degree 20 de 20 degree 0 minutes to 20 degree 59 minutes is the value of the 21st right when we say 1 degree it is 0.00 to 0.59 minutes that's all one rashi have 30 degree one degree have 60 minutes right that is a basic astrological calculation i am pretty sure you know about it. now coming to pushkar how does pushkar work there is a particular thing if you see the pushkar shloka once again you will see that it is written पुष्कर भाग संगिका मुहूर्त जन्मादिशु शोभन प्रदा पुष्कर इज द नेम भाग इज द डिवीजन संगिका दिस पार्ट इज नोन एज पुष्कर डिवीजन मुहूर्त इन द मुहूर्ता चार्ट जन्मादिशु इन द बर्थ चार्ट इफ अ प्लैनेट इज देयर दिस इज शोभन प्रदा दैट प्लैनेट इज शोभन प्रद शोभन प्रद मींस ब्यूटीफुल टू लुक एट अकॉर्डिंग टू मी pushkar the word pushkar in vishnu sahasranam one name of vishnu is pushkar also right the shloka is pushkaraksho mahasuna pushkar also means pushti kar pushti means strength pushti means power vargottam as i have told you earlier makes the planet beneficial and makes the planet gives you prominent results in life but it doesn't make the planet strong if the planet is weak it still remains weak whereas the pushkar amsha is shobhan prad gives you beautiful result shobhan prad is beautiful to look at this should be very very clearly understood when we say pushkar gives you beautiful result it means beautiful to look at 
if uh, if someone is a very successful businessman but he doesn't treat his employees well then though he is a successful businessman he cannot be told as a good person he will still be told as a bad person so this is not shobhan this is not good when a person treats everyone in a good way then he will call he will be called as a shobhan person in simple putting it into simple languages when your mother tells you that be like him it is a shobhan result it is a beautiful result this is what pushkar gives you whichever planet falls in pushkar you have such beautiful traits related to that planet that everyone will tell you be like him the most beautiful result of the planet the most karmically purified result of the planet the most brilliant result of the planet which should be followed by everyone will come of that planet which goes to pushkar degree at pushkar namamsha is not a concept at all right the most beautiful result of the pushkar will come this point was shobhan pula pushkar is also pushti karak that makes the planet strong also the result of the planet is strong prominently felt so pushkar gives you good beautiful result as well as makes the planet strong so say if a debilitated planet is in pushkar degree then that planet is very powerful and because pushkar is a specific degree in a rashi the strength given by pushkar is more powerful as compared to any other type of strength given by any planet in any situation this have to be very clearly understood let's take an example let's take two example to better understand the working of pushkar first of all we will take the horoscope of swami ramakrishna paramahans if you have noted it then you will see the venus for ramakrishna paramahans is at 8 degree pisces 22 minutes that means venus is in 9th degree in pisces when you look at this table 9 degree pisces is pushkar so the venus of swami ramakrishna paramahans is in pushkar amsha the result of venus how thakur ramakrishna paramahans treated woman Ra swami ramakrishna paramahans being a male his ways of treating the woman was so beautiful and so brilliant that one cannot imagine if you see the venus of thakur venus is debilitated in navamsha venus is also getting the ninth aspect of rahu as well but despite this particular thing the behavior and the relationship of thakur with women was very very beautiful something that everyone should learn from this comes because of the pushkar amsha of venus also luxuries the way thakur ramakrishna paramahans treated the luxuries the illusions the maya of the world is beautiful an example also venus is the lord of the ninth house and venus is the lord of the fourth house fourth house indicates the mother the divine mother also i think swami ramakrishna paramahans is the only spiritual saint who is known to have talked with goddess swami ramakrishna paramahans used to talk with kali the goddess 
His relationship with the goddess is one of the most beautiful relationship. I don't know if anyone else had such a beautiful relationship with their Ishta Devata, with their God they worship, that they actually had the privilege to talk. Also, Thakur lived in uh, Dakshineshwar Kali temple, which is a big temple. So he, so he also had a big place to live. Right. And uh, he was also very happy in life because he was into spirituality. So self-contented, very happy. Right. So all the results of the fourth house are also very good and very prominent. Right. Because Pushkar also gives the strength to the planet. Fourth Lord being powerful. He had a big temple, uh, you know, big temple of Dakshineshwar to live in. Right. And the result is exemplary. Right. So the way Thakur dealt with the comforts of the world and comforts of the uh, things given to him is also very example right like thakur was very much attached to smoking hookah thakur was very attached to visiting to parties right thakur was very attached to many foods also but the level of detachment that he had from inside and the way he treated all these things is quite exemplary. Also, Venus is the lord of the ninth house, right? Thakur Ramakrishna Paramhans, ninth house indicates luck. Uh, the lord Venus is strong by being a Pushkaramsha. He was very lucky, right? He was very lucky. His elder brother was serving in the Dakshineshwar temple. He was uh, in his uh, village, right? His brother called him. And he don't have to search for a, you know, job as a priest. You know, he was a Brahmin. So he was destined to search for a temple where he can worship. But because of his elder brother being in the Dakshineshwar Kali temple, he never had that issue. And other things also was very effortless with Ram Krishna Paramhans, right? Ninth Lord being in Pushkaramsha makes the Ninth Lord strong, makes him very lucky. Right. Many people go outside to search for their gurus and get the knowledge like uh, Paramahansa Yogananda had to go and had to travel. Whereas Thakur uh, never had to go to any place or search for anyone. Right. Uh, be it the Yogini or be it the Totapuri Maharaj. They all visited Ram Krishna by themselves. Ram Krishna never had to go. Right. An example of luck. And, you know, the Dakshineshwar temple, he getting the Dakshineshwar temple, mother putting her grace on Thakur, right, is very exemplary as uh, Venus, the ninth lord, goes to the Pushkaramsha, becomes a strong, indicates that Thakur has a very strong luck. And also because ninth house indicates dharma and the god, and Venus being a powerful, Right, he was very strongly devoted to spirituality and he was very strongly devoted to his Ishta Devta, his God. And also because Pushkar gives the exemplary result, and 11th house indicates the God, the relationship of Paramhans with the goddess Kali is something which is exemplary, a feat which no one had been able to achieve before him. And I think no one will be able to achieve after. Another good example for this particular Pushkar Amsha is the horoscope of Raman Maharshi. Rahu for the horoscope of Raman Maharshi is at 22 degree 36 minutes in Sagittarius, which makes the Rahu go into the 23rd degree of Sagittarius. If you refer to the table, 23rd degree of Sagittarius is Pushkar Bhaga or Pushkar Amsha, whatever you say. As I have already told you, I don't believe in the concept of Pushkar Namamsha. Why I don't believe in that is based on my experience of looking at multiple charts and because uh, the classical definition uh, doesn't fructify or, you know, because of if you ever have 1% understanding of Sanskrit, you will not be able to believe in the concept of Pushkar Namamsha. And also, you know, the type of importance that is given to Pushkar. When you look at charts and check now planets in those in Navamsha which is falling coinciding with Pushkar degree. If you try to check the result for those planets, you will never find. Right? So because the result told doesn't seem to fructify when we use Pushkar concept in Navamsha, I don't believe in the Pushkar Navamsha concept. Right? So once again, 
Rahu for the horoscope of Ramana Maharishi is in Pushkar Amisha. This Rahu is strong. This Rahu should give strong result because of Pushti Karaka. And Rahu should give exemplary result because of being uh, Shobhrabha. Rahu is the Karaka for Maya or illusion. The way Raman Maharshi defined Maya and illusion, the way Raman Maharshi lived in Raman Ashram and interacted with people is an example written. Shoban Prada. Rahu is in the third house, which indicates a silence also. Right? Rahu is in the third house, which indicates Upadesh or teachings also. The way Ramana Maharshi gave Upadesh to people. The teachings of Ramana Maharshi indicated by the third house is also very example. Another point very important here is this Rahu in the Pushkar Amsha is conjoined with Sun. Sun is the Karka for soul. And also the soul related sciences, that is Christianity related sciences of Advait Vedanta, non-dualism, self-inquiry, meditation. All these things are also ruled by Sun. Because Rahu is conjoined with Sun. The philosophy of Ramana Maharshi related to the soul. The teachings of Raman Maharshi related to self-inquiry. The teachings of Raman Maharshi related to all the things that are denoted by sun, self-inquiry, self-assessment, meditation, etc. is example and is something that no one before him have been able to achieve and I think no one will be able to achieve after him. Once again, a result of Rahu going to Pushkaramsha. Right? So, this particular way, uh, you should understand the result. And this particular result is not seen in Navamsha. If you check the Pushkar Navamsha, you know, these results are not seen. Because these results are not seen, then, so because of that particular reason, uh, I don't believe in it. Okay. Now see, there is one more thing. This Mars is at 21 degree Aries 14 minutes. This should not be considered to be in 21 degrees, but should be considered to be in 22 degrees. If you consider this Mars to be in 21 degrees because it is in 21 degrees 14 minutes in the Aries Rashi, this Mars will come to be as Pushkaramsha. Pushkaramsha planet is also Pushtikara, which makes the planet powerful. When a planet is powerful, he will fructify the result promised by him 100%. For Raman Maharshi, Mars is the 7,000. If you take Mars to be the Pushtikara, as strong as Pushkar indicates, then according to that, the seventh lord being very strong, Raman Maharshi should be married. But Raman Maharshi is unmarried as we already know. So for this particular reason, because it doesn't work in experience, the Mars, which is at 21 degree, 14 minutes in Aries, should be taken to be in the 22nd degree of Aries and should not be taken as being in 21st degree of Aries. Same goes to the case of Swami Ramakrishna Paramahansa, his seventh lord situated in Lagna aspects the seventh house. The aspect of the sign lord over the house makes the sign strong. And because of this particular reason, Ramkrish Paramahans, despite being a celibate and a sannyasi, was married to Sharda. Right? So I think this point is uh, pretty, pretty clear. 